start and wrap up. We thought that, that since there has been now six workshops and we have a very short time to sort of uh, wrap them up, so we thought that, that, that it would be easiest if we, we just conclude. I will conclude five of them and, and you will conclude your own workshop. And, uh, <laughs> and, and please, I, I, I have uh, obviously only been to one of the workshops, so, so uh, if I say something wrong, then, then it's my... Um, yeah, it's... Anyway, uh, my own workshop, uh, Riders Unions and Multilingualism, um, with, with an introduction by Chastin Bennett. Um, one of the things that we discussed very much was that um, that we should start to focus on quality rather than language. N not to see the langu language, uh, multilingualist la language diversity as some kind of a sort of threshold. We, sh we need to just to make solutions to, to make it easier, but, but focus when, when we evaluate books. Uh, the entrance for becoming a member of a union should be the quality of the work, not the language of the work. So the focus should be on the literary quality, regardless of, of language. And that should be the, the most important thing. Uh, another thing that we, we discussed uh, was that, that actually we, sh we should s still talk about language because with all the multilingualism of the writers' unions, there is a great possibility for every writer in the union to, to get their works. You have an Arabic writer, that, that is an entrance also to a huge world outside of Scandinavia, outside of the Nordic countries. So with the multilingualism of the writers' unions, we also open up the writers' unions for a international yeah, audience, which is very important. And then the third point that we discussed was that, that the unions, sh uh, the information about what the unions are and for whom and how they, cop they work should be more open and more accessible so that people who are not familiar with, for example, the, the, fi the literary field in, in, in different Nordic countries uh, can know how the union functions and that you can actually also be a, a writer without being a member of a union because in all different countries of the world we have different, the unions have different roles. So, so it's very important that we open up explain what the unions are and for whom. Okay, and then the second group was multilingual networks uh, of and for writers and, and Annika will. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> we were discussing actually three things. The first thing is how do we connect multilingual network to the mainstream? Um, we thought that it is important not to point out only the problems, but the benefits. Mm, the prospect is important to show the possibility of exchange. That should be the focus. Uh, to connect the multilingual network to the mainstream, we need structures, and a network can be a very good structure. Although not uh, every artist is not a networker, as we know, so that's why the structure and the person who does that is very, very important because the person is then opening the doors for so many people. <coughs> uh, the network is also important for feeling uh, that you are a part of something bigger. Then we went over to discuss the language. Uh, what should the language then be in the network? Some said that the individual and the language of the individual is a resource, and that's why very important. But we need a language that is used for information and communication in between the network. Although uh, to focus on, on uh, the literature 
it is also very, very important that the translation should be support, and also the accessibility to translation should be better, much better. That was the feeling in our group, at least. Um, then we talked also about personal networks, that many of us have personal networks, and uh, mm, it can also be uh, helpful to share your personal networks when you try to go further on with your project. As a summary, we were discussing accessibility, support for translations, network, also uh, big networks in the Nordic region, not only national uh, networks, participation and financing also a bit. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And now, now we go into where I never, uh, where I was not a part of, and now I'm trying to. Uh, the third group, grants and multilingualism, and the introduction was done by Jesper Söderström from Sveriges författarfond, the Swedish uh, Writers uh, Foundation. I can't remember. Uh, one of the things that they were discussing is that uh, it's important to have. Uh, a Nordic, uh, um, yeah, uh, Nordic plat or uh, I forget <laughs> pool, a Nordic pool of of uh, of um, um, people, who, uh, a reviewer, literary reviewer, people who can review the texts, the works. A uh, thing that we also think that is very important. Uh, another prob one of the problems that they were discussing is that that it seems that there are very little, and now I, I understood that, that in this group there were a lot of, uh, not a lot, but some representatives of uh, funding bodies. We have some uh, uh, representatives here with us today. Um, and they, uh, there was a, there's not so many applications. And one reason for that might be that, that it can be hard for people who are not familiar with the, with the field, the cultural field of the country, to know how, where the, what kind of uh, grants there are to be applied for, who can apply for them. Um, it's hard to find, it also for us who, who have been living in this country for, or for all our lives. There's so many different places to apply for money and different kind of crit criteria, and it can be hard. And that's why we need more information about how to apply and to, to sort of get the information in different languages as well. And then uh, the, and also that we, we yeah, to, to see that, that it's not only in the dominant language, but also maybe in English or other languages. And then the third one uh, point they had is that, onko raha liian? Vähän olemassa erillisrahana julkisilla tahoilla. Can you explain what you mean by that? Tommy. We were talking about, uh, uh, especially in, in public grants, if there should be a separate money for, for non-national uh, writers and, and also non-national uh, artists in general. And whether sh whether this kind of um, because in Finland, as we know, in in the Finnish uh, art promotion center, there is a special fund for uh, multicultural artists, and this uh, this money at this moment is not so big. And we were talking about if it would be bigger, w uh, would it would there be more applicants? Also, that was a case. Thank you. Uh, just uh, in between, we we have uh, in all the groups there have been somebody who has written down the notes, and we will make them um, anonymous. Those notes, and, and hopefully, we'll al also be able to somehow send it to you, so that you get the idea of what kind of things are important or have been seen as important in in the different groups. Uh, the third, the fourth group was transnational publishing in the Nordic countries and. And especially, we wanted to focus on the Sami publishing uh, or Sami literature, Sami uh, literature written in different Sami languages. Uh, and the introduction was done by Vuoko Hirvonen, who is a professor at Sami University College in, in uh, Norway. Uh, 
And uh, the discussion they had was that they discussed uh, how to, that in order to promote Sami language and literature, there is a need for a uh, Sami language cultural center to be, to be, is that not correct? Yeah. Uh, literature center. Uh, yeah, th there are museums and there are centers, but, but a literature center. And, th and that kind of a center need uh, a common Nordic based funding uh, and not uh, a, a funding which is not uh, losing the national funds as well. So the both the Nordic, common Nordic funding, but also uh, the national ones. And then you were discussing also the growing nationalism and in, in, the, in the different countries and, and what kind of threat the growing nationalism can be when it comes to the transnational publishing. Is there something else you have want to add? Uh, please speak in this, this one so, so that the people outside of the room here. And this center should be under the Nordic Council. Yeah. Thank you. And it suits fine we are where we are today. Okay, and the, f the fifth uh, group was discussing translation and um, <coughs> and their points were that the, the need for exchanging translation and to find uh, a cooperation with embassies and cultural organizations. Uh, and then they were also talking about the lack of translations to and from minority languages. And then uh, one of the threat to the translation field is that the market rules what gets to be published uh, or translated and that's I think that we can all agree with that that it's not necessarily always uh, yeah uh, uh, a multidisip or diversity that is translated and this last group uh, multilingual and yes, yeah, so, uh, sorry, the, the introduction in that translation group was by Jana Nikula, who is the, the working in the, or a part of the, the, the writers. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's the uh, literary translators chapter in Journalist Union. Yes, thank you. Also in our dis uh, group, we were talking about, about the, the cooperation between the translations unions and the writers unions and, and how important that can be when it comes to, to this language li literature. The, the fifth one, the sixth one is the group was the multilingual writers visits. Uh, and uh, the introduction was made by Ilmi Vilasis, who is the director of the Finnish Reading Center. And uh, they discussed here, here. Uh, <laughs> networks, the importance of networks and connecting authors with audiences uh, and how that can be made. Um, uh, for your information also, the, the Finnish Reading Center has now uh, renewed their uh, web pages or are in the process of re renewing it. So. So in the future, when, when schools and libraries are looking for writers, they can also look for, for writers in different languages to come and, and present to the schools, which is, I think, a really, really good thing. Uh, and then they were talking about the evaluation and uh, a need for a translation translators bank. And they were also talking about that maybe students can be applied as well to some extent. And then they talked about non-organized authors groups. Uh, that, it uh, that, that, that the field of, of uh, multilingual writers are often a part of a non-organized authors group, and it can be hard to find for, for, for organizations that would like to, for example, have a writer that writes in, say, Kurdish, to find. Wh where do you find it? Through which uh, channels do you find them? Okay. Is there anything I I probably could not grasp everything you you wrote, but is there anything somebody wants to add to this? Something that you feel that that got lost in translation? Yeah, Oti. Yeah. Ah, please speak in. Okay. Yeah, just I was in the group of multilingual networks uh, that was actually almost directed by Anisur Rahman there, mm -hmm. uh, the 
director of Literaturcentrum. And uh, one thing that we did also was a collection of the email addresses of the people who participated, and uh, uh, they agreed uh, in sharing it also for others. So if somebody's interested in getting contacts of uh, writers who are interested in creating networks of writers, so the list of emails is Annika has it. Yeah. Maybe we can we can figure out after after the seminar uh, whether we, whether there is possibility for sharing. Uh, not everybody wants to sh probably share their email addresses, but we can check if if some those of you who would like to to sort of be in, in this kind of a network, we can we can figure that out how to do it. Okay, so let's go on to the pro in the program. Now we are a bit uh, late in the schedule, but that does not matter. Uh, the next part is the first panel, Evaluation and Multilingualism, and I ask um, Elisabeth Nordgren from the Finnish Critics Association to come up and, and also all the other participants, and uh, the floor is yours. <laughs> 